Right, so hello, welcome back to my channel. This is another IB psychology video because my last one seems to do quite well. Um, not necessarily in views, I mean it's got a decent amount of views, but I get a lot of people coming to my Instagram DMs and then being like, I've oh, just watched this video, help. And I'm happy to help, so here you go. This is going to be about the IA, which is the internal assessment, which is quite an easy part of psychology, I think. It's a really nice place to secure a good chunk of marks. I've even made notes for this video. I don't normally make notes because I just talk rubbish. Like for my psychology general video, I was just spewing rubbish. I didn't have any specific tips other than like, you know, pay attention in your lessons. But I've actually got notes. So yeah, let's begin all about the psychology IA. So I think it's worth about 20% of your grade. I think it's different for a standard level. I think for standard level it's worth 25% potentially because they don't have a paper three. But regardless, you can easily do well in the IA, easily. So I got a seven in the IA. Um, I think my grade went up by like one mark from my draft to my final one. Like it really didn't change, but I also know people that went from like 14 marks to like 20, so. So first step for the IA is you have to pick a study. Often your teachers will give you like an IA menu as in they'll give you like six studies that you can pick from and you just pick. Um, if this happens, pick one you're familiar with. Pick one that looks easy. But I, I did Loftus and Palmer, which is probably the most common one that is done for the Psychology IA and it's a very easy study to replicate, it really is. You have to think logically, what can you do within the environment that you're in? Like we were in a school, well you're in a school because you're doing the IB, but you're in a school, what can you do? And what will be the easiest to do? You basically want something that's gonna get you quick results. They don't have to be good results. My results were awful. They just have to exist. You just, you want something that can get you results that you can talk about and that mentions like themes that you can actually understand. As in if you're gonna pick a study on like the dual process model and you don't understand the dual process model, your introduction's ruined basically because your introduction is where you kind of explain everything and if you don't know what you're explaining you're not going to get any marks so it is always i am going to recommend doing loftus and palmer i know that your teacher might pick for you but if you have the option of loftus and palmer it's very easy and it doesn't matter that everyone do does it it doesn't matter that everyone does it no one cares the examiners aren't like oh everyone did loftus and palmer let's like dock a few marks no they couldn't care less most people in our class did loftus and palmer i think we had some people doing Maybe Badly and Hitch. We had some people doing some other things, but Loftus and Palmer, very easy place to start because you're literally gonna talk about schema, reconstructive memory, and Bartlett. Quite possibly the nicest things in IB psychology. They really are. They're very easy sections to talk about. So first up, introduction. Um, I am gonna tell you the word count of everything I did. Mine was exactly 2,200 words. You have 2,200. Mine was exactly on the dot and it was difficult to get it down to that. I think I started on 2,500 and then I had to cut it down because there's so much you can say, there really is. You, if you're under the word count, you need to talk more. Like if you're significantly under, you really need to talk more because you could get the marks, but why not add words that will get you the marks? So basically for the introduction, my introduction was 562 words. References, your citations don't count in your word count. I counted the citations because I wasn't going to go through and minus the citations, but it was around 560 words for my introduction, which is a quarter, it's about a quarter of your whole IA. And yeah, it should be. Your introduction is, is what it says on the tin. You need to tell people what's going on. You're writing it as if someone knows nothing about psychology. You need to tell them about psychology. You need to define all your concepts. I'm going to use the example of Loftus and Palmer because I did Loftus and Palmer. You need to define, you know, memory, schema, reconstructive memory, and you want to link that all to the world. Why is it relevant? Like, why, why bother doing this study? So I think I put that, like, violent crime rates were going up, um, 
and they're like witness statements and because this was you know related to witness statements I've got my link I'm done like it was literally my first sentence was like as violent crime rates are like soaring you know cite whoever said that you know more people are giving witness statements you know witness statements are becoming distorted Loftus and Palmer did that you're welcome you want a real world link and they're quite easy to find especially if you do Loftus and Palmer because reconstructive memory so you want your real world link you want to define reconstructive memory all of that kind of stuff but don't just say reconstructive memory is this that's not fun find a funky way to kind of incorporate it because you don't just want to say like schema is this reconstructive memory is this because it's just it doesn't flow you want your ia to flow like you want to link all of your concepts together and then you kind of you know you define it you look at the theories like you know your reconstructive memory theory what is reconstructive memory Tell me about it. Like, I, I don't just tell me reconstructed memory is blah, blah, blah. No. Tell me actually about it. Um, let's say I know nothing about it and I'm reading your IA. If you've just said like reconstructed memory is when your memory is reconstructed. No, it's that's rubbish. That's not good. I don't understand anything from that. So you want to explain it simply, but you've, also, you've got a lot of words to explain it. In your first draft, don't care about the word count because you can go back and edit it. It's better to hand in something for your draft, way too many words, because then your teacher can just cross out a whole paragraph and be like, this is awful, get rid of it, rather than you handing in something that's, you know, 2,000 words. Your teacher isn't gonna tell you specifically where to add things and what to add. Like they'll say, you know, bulk up your introduction on your reconstructed memory definition but you don't really know what to do there so it's better to write too much and then you want to summarize your study so for reconstructed memory i'm pretty sure we i did bartlett like we were redoing loftus and palmer but the original study for reconstructed memory was bartlett very easy study to, to just you just say like you know bartlett studied this in whatever year he did this he found this and then Loftus and Palmer did this. And then you say like, obviously like, you know, we're doing Loftus and Palmer, like, here you go. Then you put your IV, your DV, your null hypothesis and your experimental hypothesis. You literally just put independent variable, colon, what it is, dependent variable, colon, what it is. But you have to operation, operationalize it? Is that the word? You have to like properly explain it. Your teacher should tell you how to do this. But if not, you can find a lot of examples online. I, I got confused at the beginning and I wasn't sure, like, I wasn't being specific enough with it. But you want to very specifically say it. As in your dependent variable, you will say, like, you know, the exact speed brackets, miles per hour, given by participants after watching this. You, something like that. You can't just say, like, speed given by participants. You need to be very specific. And then your introduction is completed. Your introduction is done. Read over it several times. You've got so much time to do an IA, like so much time. I think for my psychology one, it didn't take me long, but you, you, you've you, got a lot of time to do it. We started ours in year 12 um, and finished it in year 13, as I did the actual study in year 13. In year 12, in like summer, we wrote our introductions and stuff like that. Some people didn't. If your teacher sets it to you in year 12 in summer, do it in year 12 in summer. So then you have the exploration. This is the chunkiest section. This was 809 words. So this bit is split up into quite a few different sections. You want to talk about the procedure. Mine was 183 words talking about the procedure, which is literally you saying, we are going to make participants sit and watch this video. You just explain exactly what you were doing. It doesn't have to sound fancy because it, it's not. You're literally gonna say like, students will sit watching this on a laptop screen at this time of day, simple. Then you want to talk about your research design. This was 93 words, it's not difficult. You just say like, this is repeated measures, this is independent measures, this is matched pairs. Which one is it? What does that mean? Like, you know, this is an independent measures design because participants are only gonna watch the video once. And then you kind of put like, why? Why have you done that? What does that mean? Like, you can say why you've done that by kind of slating the other methods and being like well if we'd done repeated measures this would have happened you're done it's 
not even 100 words that bit and then you want to talk about your sampling method which is how you got your sample it's probably going to be opportunity or volunteer as in we literally walked into a classroom and we're like can we steal your students or we went into like the study center can we use you you just basically explain like you know we are going to go into our sixth form study center and if anyone's there and they want to take part they will take part what's that an opportunity sample why are we using that well because it's the most convenient one for us to do what does that mean but you don't want to explain your actual participants as in your sample like don't don't explain about them yet because then oh why did i say 131 words for this one then you don't want to talk about your actual participants i used 150 words for this you just say like you know our participants are 16 to 19 year old ib students we are excluding anyone that studied ib psychology for this reason we are only doing men for this reason like be as specific as you can as in i think i said like like you know do they have to have english as their first language do they have to be fluent in english do you want people with specific hair colors do you want people with like wearing specific outfits like literally be as specific as you can write down every single trait you're looking for and just kind of try and shove it all into a nice little paragraph then we move on to the controls this is about 100 words mine was 106 you basically just very simply say what you are controlling you're going to control it by asking everyone at the same time of day or doing all of our study in one chunk so that they can't you know go and tell other people about the study so things to mention about controls so, how are you keeping it standardized are you giving them standardized instructions hint yes you are so controls i put about the age range how we're only going to do students within these ages because we don't know how it's going to affect other people and we don't want to know then you move on to the materials this is very bog standard it's 134 words you literally put materials and then like bullet point what you've used as in everything in your appendix which i will talk about in a minute like consent form you know colon we made this consent form to keep study ethical one sentence about why you've done each thing pretty much and then we move on to the analysis which no one ever likes because it's stats and numbers and stuff like that mine was 313 words i think it didn't i don't think you count words in the table so it was probably less than that because i didn't take it away so you basically shove your results in a table you put the mean the standard deviation done and you basically then just say you know as seen by figure one the mean was this the standard deviation was this the mean was bigger in this one the standard deviation was bigger in this one basic things like that and then pretty much after that you put in a graph, make it on Excel, very easy, you know, keep it simple, and then you just explain it, as seen by figure two, this, this, and this. I also, when describing my figure two, which was my graph, basically just said, you know, the data appears to indicate that when you use a more emphatic word, you know, people will guess a higher speed. You know, I can't officially say that that is what it did indicate because i haven't done my stats but like you know it looks like it's heading in that direction then you do your statistical analysis put it in the stats calculator don't do it yourself we use a man whitney test which has stuff about your u number don't know what it meant but literally like chunk about this big can you reject your null hypothesis yes or no and then after that i did a tiny final sentence that says like from these results you know although we did see a change in the responses it's not statistically significant and then the evaluation this is easy it really is this was 572 words in this at the very beginning i said you know prior research has shown this we replicated this study and although we found similar results they weren't significant you talk about strengths and weaknesses um talk about your your design you know maybe you did repeated measures why was that a good thing well, why did you do that why was it good but also like what were the issues with that so like i spoke about my independent measures so i was like we use independent measures because it was good because and then tiny centers at the end however this is also an issue that could have happened because of that like i think i spoke about four or five things i spoke about my research design the most and then participant sampling um confounding variables and about my standardized instructions and then you kind of want a tiny little section about at the end you know for further research 
we could do this. I think I said we could change the colour of the car. It doesn't have to be something you're actually going to do because you're not going to do it. But you know, just like something else that you could do. And then at the end you literally put a completely finishing sentence, as in, as a result of our study, it can be concluded at a significant level of this, that, changing the verb in a leading question, doesn't do anything. And then you shove in your references. Referencing is not hard. Search up APA reference generator, put your things in, you're done. And then we move on to your appendix, which doesn't count for your word count, you can write as much as you want in there. So you need your informed consent. You can Google, if you have access to Think IB through your school, use Think IB, it is an incredible website. I love Think IB. They have examples that you can use, but for informed consent, you literally just have to put like, dear participant, this is what you're gonna be doing in the study. Are you okay with that? And then just like put a little blank box for their signature. You, you, you just, you don't have to include a completed one in your IA. Like, it's blank, it doesn't matter if it's not good, as long as, as long as you tell them what's gonna happen and you ask for their consent, you're good. Then you do a debrief, pretty simple, you know, dear participant, we studied this, you know, oh, we deceived you, here's why, here's what happened. You can include about your results if you want to, and then you just say like, you know, thanks very much, congrats. And then you need your instructions, as in like, if you walk into a room, what are you saying? Like, I, had, I think I had a script. Yeah, I literally had a script that says, it just says like, hello, thanks for taking part, brackets, take in consent forms, things like that. And you also put like, if you used a YouTube video, like we used a test video of a car crashing, and then you have to put in your raw data, your inferential statistics, and then you're pretty much done. And like any questionnaires that you use as well. But that is like what you need to actually include in the IA to get marks. So I'm gonna tell you, the IA is very simple to get your marks in. They don't really want too much from you. In your introduction, you just need to introduce. You just need to say, you need to give a backstory. It's like if you're writing a prologue. You can't just go straight into the story without introducing the characters. So like, what a schema? Why are they relevant? Why do we care about them? Like, don't define things that, you know, are kind of there, but like they're not actually relevant to what you're doing. So you want to kind of briefly state what's going on. You want to keep it formal. You don't want to type it how you would say it. It needs to be formal because it's it's a proper fancy report what you're doing basically. And you want to try and kind of find links within what you're saying. As in don't just go from, you know, schema to eyewitnesses if there's nothing going on. Basically, I wanted to get from crime to schema because my next paragraph was going to be about Bartlett and the War of the Ghosts, which is about schema. But I can't just go crime to schema because it's not relevant, it's not relevant at all. So I went from crime to eyewitness testimonies. Hmm, are they reliable? Leading questions. Oh, how leading questions can affect people. Oh, schema, schema driven errors, Bartlett. Like make sure you kind of know what you're doing in the sense of if you're using independent measures, do you know what they are and why are you doing that? Like don't do anything without reason. And you can do things to make your study not so good. Not, you know, not not purposely, as in like, oh, we did this to ruin our study. But like, you can use students um, and like not discount that they've done IB psychology. No, then in your like evaluation, but you can literally say, oh, but some students might have done IB psychology, so that would have been a bad thing because they would have already known about the study. So you can literally do things like that. I'm pretty sure we did things like that. I don't really know what specifically, but yeah. Um, basically, you have a draft, use it. Get it handed in on time, have it completed. Do not hand in an incomplete draft. It really does not take long. Check with your teacher. They can only give you feedback once, but you can ask them like, hmm, would you recommend doing something like this? Or, you know, how many things should I talk about in my evaluation? And things like that where it's not asking them specifically about yours, but just generic IA things. And they also will probably teach you how to do an IA. They should teach you how to do an IA. If not, Think IB, go on Think IB. I will link Think IB down below. Um, you can only access it if your school has access to it, unfortunately. But you can find quite a few resources online of how to write an IA. Basically, the IA is not too difficult. You can do it. I believe in you. You just have to put your mind to it. Just take, set a whole afternoon and just type. Just 
type as much as you can and then when you get your first draft and your teacher tells you it's all rubbish you know exactly which bits to take out because my teacher literally just fat crossed out a whole sentence and I was like right straight away going into my draft deleted it don't need it like if you just crossed it out it's going because she knows what she wants the teachers know what to want because they're your teacher but yeah um that's literally all I have to say hopefully you do a wonderful IA I don't know how it's going to work with Covid but hopefully you all do some wonderful IAs and everything is good um and hopefully we all get sevens yeah.